Alright, hi everybody, Ryan here again. So, I've had some requests about um, EGR and DPF deletes. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of do a run through, and this is not all inclusive. Um, it can be different with different engines, um, but it's just kind of what I know what goes through, um, what the process is with uh, typically with most uh, deletes. So, kind of jump right into it. So, EGR, this is the EGR valve on this Cummins ISX15 right here. This little unit right here, the valves right there. So that's what kind of controls the flow of the exhaust gas back over on the other side to the intake manifold. So typically, all this stuff, they got in these systems pretty incognito. I mean, the deletes incognito to where everything's still in place and like the the untrained eye if you're looking at it you wouldn't even know anything has been done it's like you're not you're not taking all this stuff off now um, all everything is still be the wiring harnesses sensors everything will still be here um, usually this will be shut down the cgr valve will be shut down with the software basically so where it, it'll just be closed then um, so as we kind of move back around that uh, exhaust gas goes through down and around to the EGR cooler, which moves back up into the end of the exhaust manifold. So in a lot of systems or deletes, they'll actually put a blocking plate of some sort in there, and that will keep the exhaust from actually, it'll block off the EGR cooler essentially, and, and it's not, nothing's even going through it. Because uh, that, with that exhaust pressure, um, if you are still getting exhaust pressure through there, it can, eventually run down down the road you can see because there's there's tubes through that and there's coolant running through there to cool that exhaust gas before it goes into the engine uh, back into the intake because you want cooler air you know to get better fuel economy with cooler air is uh is more dense so you can pack more air in so better fuel economy more power and all that good stuff so throwing hot air in isn't good like i said so you got a mixture or uh, basically like a radiator in there inside that EGR cooler to where it's cooling the exhaust gas coming out here. And you know, as you know, exhaust gas can reach temperatures. If you've got a pyrometer, you can, you know, be a thousand degrees. So you don't want thousand degree exhaust gas coming in your engine. So it's, um, I, I don't like the whole idea, but you know, it is what it is. I think it's stupid, but uh, you know, throwing exhaust back into an engine and trying to reburn it on top of that, you got up to thousand degree exhaust gas that you're putting in. Uh, so it's, it just is what it is. So, uh, so that's kind of um, the EGR portion of this. I mean, like I said, a lot of this stuff is software. Um, so when when it's programmed, it's going to shut this off. It's going to change if you got a variable geometry turbo like this. It could change some of the parameters within that. And uh, like I said, and, and uh, some deletes they physically block off the EGR cooler as well. So, so that's the EGR portion. Now the DPF portion. Um, I, I'm not going to take all this apart, um, so I'm just doing like a quick run through. So if you guys have watched my DPF canister replacement, if you want to see all this stuff, we'll put a link in the video if you kind of want to look at what's inside of that. Um, my DPF and SCR is underneath these steps, two big canisters. Uh, the DPF is the main one, it's got that ceramic honeycomb in it. So if you're doing a DPF delete, again, mostly software, it's going to shut all that stuff off. It's not going to do regions. Uh, it's going to your uh, your diesel uh, doser injector here, right off the turbo. It's going to shut that off. But like I said, there's no reason it's still going to be here. Uh, but it's just not going to do anything. It's not going to inject any fuel. Like I said, you waste a lot of fuel with this guy. This is actually the fuel line. This is the coolant line to cool that. Um, so this is uh, yeah fuel here, to where it injects fuel in to heat that up to that. Uh, the catalyst section of the DPF, it heats that up to a little over 930 degrees or so to actually start that reaction to, to burn the carbon off. So, um, and this has to be like 500 and this ex inlet exhaust temperature has to be like 570 degrees roughly to start that whole process. So you waste a lot of fuel with that dumping fuel into your exhaust to, to start that reaction to burn all that stuff. But if you're doing a DPF delete, like I said again, software, it's going to change a lot of parameters in the turbo and, and some people run into problems to where you actually, um, you can burn your turbo up. So again, um, 
a lot of with these deletes, a lot of people run into problems with the turbo when you change the parameters. It's not uh, the back pressure and all that, and the way the the flow and the heat. It, that's where people run into a lot of problems with. Uh, if you get a bad tune, you can melt this turbo down. And um, I bought this is a newer turbo aftermarket with the actuator. Um, you're in about five grand, and that's putting it on yourself. I mean, if you go to Cummins, just with the parts and the actuator and and um, calibration of the actuator, you could be looking closer to nine to ten thousand dollars on this particular engine um, with a delete. I mean, there are some other, I've heard some guys saying put a Series 60 Detroit turbo on there. I don't know how that would all work out. Um, but uh, with, with this specific turbo, uh, variable geometry turbo, um, which I like variable geometry turbos because it kind of, it changes the aspect ratio of the, the fins within the turbo or the turbine um, for the conditions you know, what you're running at as far as what the needs for boost and all that. So I like a variable, variable geometry turbo. Um, so I, don't, I wouldn't, I, I don't think I'd be a big fan of throwing, you know, a non-variable geometry type of turbo in it, like a series, a standard series 60 turbo or something like that off of Detroit. So, um, so that's where a lot of people run into problems is with once you change those parameters, if they don't know what they're doing or if it's a bad program or tune, um, you can, you can this turbo get too hot then it melt it down and burn the bearings up or whatever and it's going to come apart so and and then you take a risk of if you burn up these bearings you know you got oil pressure here it can start pumping that oil into the intake and then it's it's like it can the engine can actually run away which i've seen a video of an engine running away where actually the flywheel like went through a brick wall when the engine when it hit like twenty thousand rpm and came apart so same thing with like natural gas engines um, or any any type of engine if there's a natural gas leak on a gas oil or something it can suck that gas in and just run uh, you know very high rpms until the engine comes apart so so that's kind of my spiel on tunes and turbos uh, as far as when we get back to the dpf and uh scr so if you're going to do a delete on a dpf uh, like i said watch that other video uh, we have where we did the canister change out you can kind of see the internals of that that honeycomb ceramic deal that's all gonna have to be drilled out. You're gonna have to drill about a, a four inch hole through that or bust all that ceramic stuff out so that actually the exhaust can flow through it and it's not getting plugged up as it used to be with the filter. So you're gonna knock a big hole in that so that uh, you know, if you're pretty much once you knock that hole in that for that canister, uh, there's no going back, it's ruined. I mean, or it's not technically ruined, but you can never use it as it was again. So you might be if you're kind of wanting to do this and you might want to go back at some point, you might be better off to try to find a used canister or something or an old, a bad one that you can bust the ceramic out of um, and, and put that in. So, um, but after that, the, uh, the DEF lines and all that, DEF pump, uh, DEF doser down there and all that, DEF injector, whatever you want to call it, all that stuff's going to be shut off is it's not going to work anymore. It's all going to be there, but it's just not going to do anything. So and that's, pretty much it so i mean that that whole canister and all that's just going to be straight through because you're going to put a hole in it or drill through it um that ceramic and uh that's pretty much it like i said a lot of it's mostly software um as far as hardware, like i said uh the the, the dpf canister you got to put a hole through that um depending on the kit or the tune you get you may block off the egr cooler um but other than that it, it will the software is going to shut that EGR valve off to where it's not sending that exhaust gas over. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I hope that kind of, that's just kind of a down and dirty, you know, kind of vague type of description. Um, you know, it's, there's different, for different engine models and all that and different tunes or whoever you're getting it through, it could be different. Um, so it really depends, but that's kind of, as far as what I know, that's kind of what goes down with these deletes. So. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, if, if that's what you're looking, information you're looking for, uh, we're trying to do the best I can. Uh, so again, uh, you guys always know we're doing the Landstar stuff, owner-operator stuff, truck maintenance stuff. We're kind of going into another business here with uh, getting into an on-site service maintenance business, kind of moving into and maybe looking into being like more of a fleet type owner type thing with uh, putting somebody in this truck and maybe buying some other trucks in the future. Uh, so it's kind of what we got going on here. So uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe please. Uh, hit the bell for the updates. Like the video, give us a thumbs up. And um, if you're interested in the farming stuff, uh, you know we kind of split the channels. Uh, you can check out the other channels as well if, if, if you like that type of stuff. We got a lot of stuff going on over there. 
now that uh, the weather's getting better and all that, so check that out as well. So again, uh, thanks for watching. We appreciate the views and the support, and we'll see you next time.